Hey everybody, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we're talking about making a progress bar like this. Before we get into the video, let's talk about the benefits of high-fiving. It feels good and makes other people feel good. High-five today. Nice. So let's go back in time and see how the heck we made this thing. So the idea here is if you're making a video and you have something where you want your viewer to know how long it's going to last, this might be an ad, this might be something that you just need to mention, but maybe isn't exactly what your main video is about. I've seen this used in a few different videos on YouTube and I really like it. So here we have a little mention of high-fiving. Before we get into the video, let's talk about the benefits of high-fiving. It feels good and makes other people feel good. High five today. So what we wanna do is make a little progress bar that goes from left to right here to show kind of how long this video is. I'm gonna do that using a fusion composition. First thing I'll do is go over to my media pool, right click, and we'll say new fusion composition. But here for the duration, I'm gonna make this like 10 frames long, just super short. And I'll hit create and I'll rename this progress bar and we'll double click on it to open it up. So here we have our blank fusion composition. And what I'll do is just grab a background node. That's this very left hand icon here in our toolbar. Grab that and drag that down into our node graph. Then I'll take the output of this background and drop it on the media out. And that'll show us a black screen up here in our right hand viewer. And so if we were to render this right now, all anybody would see would be a black screen because that's just this black background attached to media out. I don't want that. So I'm going to select background one and go up to the inspector and down here where it says background, I'm going to turn down this alpha right here. Just leave it black and turn down the alpha. That'll make sure that our background is transparent. So anything that we put on top of this will work splendidly and the size of the composition will be what we want and everything. So let's actually make our bar. We're gonna do this with a couple of background nodes actually. So again, it's very left hand icon I'll grab and drag another background node to the node graph. And I'll take the output of this and then put it over the output of our background one. And this is gonna be the outline. So I'll hit F2 on the keyboard and I'll say outline, just rename it. And now let's change this color to something nice. I don't know, maybe like a orangish yellow. I like this color, like this kind of nice deep yellow. You like this? I like it. Anyway, we're gonna make the kind of little loading bar outline with a mask. So I have my outline background selected. I'll go here to our icons in the middle for our masks. I'll click on rectangle and that will automatically add a rectangle mask to our background. And now I just need to size this well. So I'm gonna bring up the width and bring down the height and we'll do something like that. And I'm gonna uncheck solid and boost up our border width. And that's just gonna give us a little stroke around the edge. Then I can grab this little widget and bring it down here maybe towards the bottom. I want this to be pretty subtle. So I think I'll make this a little bit wider and a little bit skinnier, something like that. Cause I don't want this to be just so terribly obvious that that's the only thing people look at instead of whatever I'm trying to tell them. So we'll just push this down towards the bottom of the screen. Not really within title safe, but it's supposed to be real subtle. Okay, so something like that looks good. Now we gotta make the fill for it. And instead of doing all of that sizing again, what I'll do is just take both of these and hit control C, double click and then hit control V. That's gonna add a copy of each one of these. I'm gonna select outline one and hit F2 on the keyboard and let's call this fill. Now take my fill and take the output and merge it over our merge one. And now we have some stuff going on, except for it doesn't look like we do, but I promise we do. If I select this mask here, and I'll rename that too, just to be a good kid. I'll call it fill mask. And this one's called outline mask. Look at us just being amazing. I'm gonna take this fill mask and over in the inspector, sort of reverse part of what we did. I'm gonna click this solid again, and that'll fill this in. I'll get rid of our border width just by double clicking on it. Let's zoom in here. I'll hold control and just roll with the scroll wheel. And I wanna size this mask to be just a little bit smaller than our other mask, than our outline, something like that. Yeah. So I just brought down the width and the height. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Yeah, nice. Now this is what the bar will look like when it's totally Full. So how do we get it to animate from left to right, like fill up? We'll do that with another mask and we could animate the mask that we have here, but it's just a lot easier to do this with a separate mask. I'll show you why. In my toolbar here, I'm gonna grab another rectangle mask, but this time I'm just gonna drag it down underneath my merge two, which is where my fill gets merged over everything and I'll connect it to the mask input of merge two. What this is gonna do is only merge things over everything else where I put this mask. So really what'll happen is wherever this mask is, that's where we'll see that filled in bar. You see what I'm getting at here? I'll reset stuff and I'll just boost our width up. And what I'm gonna do is just animate where this mask is. There are probably fancier ways to do this, but all I'm really trying to do is get this right edge to be mm, pretty close to the end of the right edge of this interior fill. 
something like that. And then I'm gonna to move to the end of our composition. So frame nine, and I'll go over to our center for our mask and click on this keyframe diamond. And that's gonna tell that mask to be right there at nine frames. And I'll move to the beginning of the comp, something like this at frame zero. And now what I'll do is just move this X number for the center of my mask. And I'm just gonna move it down to where it's just off the left side. But basically it just hasn't quite started filling up that bar yet at frame zero. So now as I page through this, it fills up the bar, right? So at the beginning of the comp, it's not filled up. At the end, it's totally filled up. Now, why did we do this over just a few frames? Because we're gonna be using a really special node called a keyframe stretcher. And what this does is it stretches whatever animation we want over the length of the clip in the timeline. So if this is 30 seconds long, it takes 30 seconds to fill up the bar. So here's how we add it. I'm just gonna select our last node before our media out and I'll hit shift space bar. That'll bring up our select tool menu and I'll type KFS and that'll bring up keyframe stretcher and I'll hit return on the keyboard and that'll add a keyframe stretcher node. Now, unless you set this up right, it ruins everything. Oh boy, you can get yourself in trouble. So I'm gonna select this and go over to the inspector and you have to set this stuff right. You can't just add this thing to the end or it will ruin everything. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. So this is really important. Source end, make the source end whatever the last keyframe is. I basically picked nine frames, just sort of at random, just because it's more than two frames. You might be able to do this with two frames, actually. You just need to have enough frames here to show your animation so that you have places to put your keyframes. But let's do source end is nine frames. Stretch start is gonna be the same as source start and source end. Stretch start and stretch end, zero and nine, okay? As long as those are all set to be the first frame and the last frame of your animation, this will work. Now, for different animations and different things, you set this differently. This is very specific to this exact thing. But if we did it right, magic should happen. Yes. So we're done here in Fusion. Everything lives in this progress bar Fusion comp. So let's go back over to our edit. I'll grab our progress bar fusion comp and I'll drag it into the timeline over whatever clip I want to show this progress bar on. Zoom in a little bit here. And then I'll just set it at the beginning and I'll grab the end of this and just drag it out just so it's the same length of the clip. So now it will play for the length of the clip about telling everybody about high fives. Nice. Obviously you can style this, color this, make it as subtle or as obvious as you want, but the workflow's the same. By the way, if you wanna check out more fancy things like this, you should take a look at our Fusion titles for editors. They live in your effects library and you can just drag them to your comp and size them. And there's some really cool animated titles that you can customize right here in the edit page. That means text, background color, anything you like. Check those out right here. So good. Awesome sauce. Wonder what it tastes like. You know what it probably tastes like? Is that sauce from Cafe Yum? That stuff is so good. You know what I'm saying? Man, I should get some of that.